The aspect of the cross I want to look at is sacrifice. Jesus' death as a sacrifice for us. Sacrifice is not an easy word, is it? I don't know what that word might mean to you. I think it's a word which we resist because of two reasons. One, we see sacrifices as this ancient history thing of killing animals, brutal, as part of worship. It's so alien to us. But also sacrifices, laying down something we love, something we treasure for the greater good, is costly and difficult and challenging and something that we might want to shy away from, particularly in our consumer choice-driven, desire, comfort-driven culture. But Jesus' death was clearly a sacrifice. And so when the New Testament writers wanted to express it in the language of the day, what Jesus had done, they drew on images of sacrifice that helped them. To understand this, we need to look at the history and the biblical distinctives of sacrifice. So I'm going to give you a whistle-stop tour. This is a huge subject covering centuries and huge pages and pages of the Bible. But it's one that I think will help us understand what the Bible is telling us when it talks about Jesus' death as a sacrifice. So strap yourself in for a very rapid history ride through sacrifice. The first is this, we, how we understand history. You see, the modern, secular, post-enlightenment worldview is that um, human history is shaped by evolution, the survival of the fittest. We're a Darwinian culture now that thinks it doesn't need God, and therefore it looks at history as a process of human progress. Each civilization replacing the best than the previous one because it's better than them. The, the whole spiral upwards that human consciousness gets more and more sophisticated, more and more advanced as humans progress through knowledge, through technology. We take leaps forward. And the danger of this worldview that's so all around us, that's so established in the academic world now, is we look back over our shoulder at other cultures, other civilizations, with a sense of disdain seeing what they do as primitive, and sacrifice very much fits into that. The modern view of sacrifice is it's a historical oddball. It's a, a thing that primitive cultures used to do superstitiously to try and do deals with the gods and to try and earn themselves favour. Something consigned to history. Something a bit brutal and, and primitive and dangerous and, and nasty. That is not the biblical view of sacrifice. We need to look at what the history of sacrifice was in the Bible, which is very distinct. See, the history of sacrifice in the Bible comes in right at the start. Cain and Abel sacrifice to God. And then Noah builds sacrifices, and Abraham sacrifices as part of a covenant. And then God establishes within his law through Moses in the Mount Sinai and in the desert plains in the 40 years these are the sacrifices in the temple with the priests. The book of Leviticus is full of instructions about sacrifices, the occasions to run them, always in the temple, always done by priests, which animals, which aspects. There's a full history there of sacrifice. And so that carried on. But then in, after centuries of that in Jerusalem, animals being sacrificed as the main form of worship in 587 BC, the Babylonian Empire under Nebuchadnezzar swamped in and destroyed Jerusalem, sieged it, trashed it, and took the ruling elite off with him back to Babylon. And the nation was decimated. And then the big thing they lost was this sense of how do we draw near to God without sacrifice? And during this time they learned to worship God with psalms, with words, and the, the prophetic tradition started to say to, to worship God with, with mercy and justice is better than sacrifice. And then the temple was restored and they went back to sacrifices. But in AD 70 it happened again. This time the Romans, after the time of Jesus, as Jesus prophesied would happen, trashed Jerusalem. And since then, sacrifices have not been possible at the temple by the Jewish people. And this has led to two traditions in Judaism. One, the priestly tradition that wants to revive sacrifices, that looks forward to the day when the temple is rebuilt and we can sacrifice again, go back to the original commandments. And the prophetic tradition that says, Sacrifices were given by God for a season to draw us near to him, but they were replaced by other forms of worship. And actually, to mercy is better than sacrifice. This is one of the great prophetic statements we find in the Old Testament. That's a very brief history of sacrifice. That All that was in the background of the New Testament. But is this... We also need to understand that the, that the sacrifices in the Bible are not the same as the sacrifices in the culture around them. 
the sacrifice of the ancient Assyrians and Babylonians and Egyptians and other cultures. These were brutal. They involved sacrifices to gods to try and appease them, sacrifices to God to bribe them, child sacrifice, hideous forms of sacrifice. God said, no, sacrifice is going to be different for you. And these are the distinctives of sacrifice. The first is that sacrifice was about um, certain occasions, certain patterns and rhythms of the year to remember what God had done. So the Passover was a sacrifice to remember going through the Red Sea from slavery into freedom. Second distinctive of the Bible, because of the character of God, was sacrifices were given to draw close. That's what the Hebrew word sacrifice means. It's God saying, draw close to me. I want relationship. The English word is at atonement, at one, becoming one with God. Sacrifices were a way of restoring relationship with God. That's God's heart, relationship. So sacrifices were about cleansing so we could come into his presence. The third aspect was sacrifice was, some rabbis believed, was a way of giving back to God. God is the creator. He's the source of life. He's the source of provision. He's the one who provides for us. He's the father who gives to us. And what do you give to the one who has everything? Well, it's a reality that fatherhood is the great expression. I provide food, housing, heat, school uniforms, whatever my children need. They don't have to give me back anything. I do it because they're my children and I love them. But I have in my study a drawer of all the Father's Day cards they've given me. Yeah, Romilly Primary School has used the same design in year four, five and six for decades now. So I've got a lot of them pretty similar, but the same theme is there. This is my children's way of giving something back to me to bring me delight. And some of the rabbis saw that sacrifice was God's way of saying, I need to give you a way to feel like this is a two way relationship, that you can give me something. Give me your best. And that takes us into our other theme, the theme of surrender. That actually sacrifice is about saying, God, I choose you above the things I would cling to. You above my possessions, you above my best livestock, my best harvest. I give you my best. I surrender it to you because you're Lord and I want to worship you. So those are the distinctives. The character of sacrifice in the Bible is rooted in the character of God. Not an exploitive God who does deals with humans to get them back to, to do the right thing, but a God who says, I want relationship with you. And I want certain occasions and I want you to remember. So let's turn now to Christianity and the New Testament. How do they understand Jesus' death? Well, historically, Jesus died in Jerusalem. The very week he said that God, he was going to destroy the temple and he would be replacing the temple. That he was the presence of God on earth. He died at the very time when the sacrifices, the Passover sacrifices were happening. God's timing was perfect. And also like the scapegoat sacrifice, he went out beside the city walls and was killed, taking our sin away like a scapegoat. All of this history meant that the New Testament writers were like, let's grasp this to express what the cross means. And so what does it mean for us? Well, drawing on our same distinctives, it means three things. The first is when sacrifice is a reminder that we are saved. The beauty of Jesus' death, in the book of Hebrews, it talks about once for all. Jesus did away with sacrifices, not because of the myth of human progress getting more sophisticated, but because he did it once for all so that we can all have access to God and we can all remember that we are saved. To sacrifice is to remember that we are saved eternally. Just as the Passover links to Easter, we remember our salvation, that you're no longer a slave, you are loved, welcomed and part of God's family. The second thing sacrifice does is it tells us that we are cleansed, we are welcome, we have access to God. He runs up to us and welcomes us with open arms. We are able to draw close to him. And that's one of the big emphasis of the cross in the New Testament is that because of this, you can know God. You can have a relationship with God. You can be in a new covenant with him. You can be loved and welcomed and you can draw close to God. The third aspect is that it's something we can give back to him in surrender and worship and love. And Jesus modelled for us that actually the way of following him is the way of the cross. The way of laying down our lives, of pouring out our own life for the sake of others. It's a life of generously giving, costly. It costs us something to give to God the worship he desires. 
And that's why sacrifice is so important for us. Jesus models it for us, that this is the way you live. This is the way you follow me. You lay down your life for me as an act of worship, an act of praise to God. So today, as we think of Jesus' death on the cross, we realise that he was the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world, that he was fulfilling all that Old Testament history and all that biblical understanding of sacrifice and saying, I've done it once for all for you. So you can know God. You are now sons and daughters. You're no longer slaves. And follow me. Take up that life of sacrifice because it's the way of drawing near to God. I pray that as you think afresh about sacrifice, think fresh about Good Friday, that all this rich biblical truth will bring you life. <laughs>